I know what your cat sees when it stares at nothing. Every cat owner is familiar with the situation. Your fluffy companion is on edge, perhaps a bit too on edge for his own good, and always seems scared of his own shadow. He's curled up on the couch, almost asleep, when suddenly his head whips upward, and he's staring round-eyed at the corner of the living room. It's funny, you think, because there's nothing over there but a lampshade and a rug. Your cat extends his neck, gaze unblinking, and continues to glare intensely for another 30 seconds. He issues a small chirp. You find it slightly disturbing that your cat is so interested in something you can't even see. So you tell yourself it's a small bug or even a moving shadow that caught his attention. But I can assure you, you do not want to see the things that your cat can. Last Tuesday, I investigated a downtown antique store called Fancy Collections. Fancy Collections is a neat place because it sells just about everything you can imagine, from ancient phonographs to beautiful wine glasses. I was no regular customer, but I occasionally stopped by on my payday to see what they'd added. Most of their merchandise was old, rusted, or downright broken. But even though I hardly bought anything, it was always fun to shop. A glint of light caught my eye on one of the upper shelves. Reaching up, I found it was a pair of wireframe spectacles with golden lenses. Thinking they were antique sunglasses, I put them on. The world around me instantly turned to a golden hue. Instead of darkening my vision like normal sunglasses, these brightened everything around me. Even in the dim light of fancy collections, I could see into every nook and cranny. Areas that had been dark and shadowy just moments before were now perfectly visible. Night vision, I thought. Perplexed, I pulled them off. A tag dangling to one side reads, Cat's Eyes, 350. Well, the ability to see down the hall when I had to pee at midnight was certainly worth 350. At the very least, the glasses were antiquely stylish. I asked the clerk up front what the Cat's Eyes tag was referring to. Gentleman sold them to me a few days ago, said the clerk. Real frantic guy said they were made from the lenses of cat eyes. My face must have betrayed my disgust because he quickly said, Taxidermied, I'm sure. There's no poor kitty running around without his eyeballs, miss. Outside, I put the glasses back on, but quickly took them off again. In bright sunlight, the effect was near blinding. Once in the dark interior of my own home, I noticed the glasses were glowing. Had they been glowing this brightly in the store? I, I didn't think so. The golden lenses were now bright yellow, like two flashlights pointing into my eyes, the way cat's eyes reflect light in the dark. Wearing them, I was in awe of how well I could see the house, even without the lights on. I explored different rooms, flicking the lights on and off, even going so far as to shut myself in the bathroom in total darkness. The only time I was truly blind was when no light entered a room at all. It was spectacular. I wondered why the person who made these would pawn them to a store rather than mass produce them. The idea was worth a fortune. I quickly learned that the glasses weren't limited to the intensity of light. Moving objects such as spinning fans or tiny flies seemed to scream at me. If something moved, the glasses practically highlighted it. I found my eyes twitching at typically unnoticeable movements with the alertness of a feline. Was this what cats really saw? I wondered. Was I really seeing through a cat's eyes? At the end of the hall, a closet door stood ajar, revealing a sliver of darkness. There was a scratching noise coming from inside. It was soft at first. I thought I'd only imagined it. But then it happened again louder. Scritch. Scritch. The glasses illuminated the hallway, but the closet interior was black as night. Something was in there, and I couldn't see what it was. I inched toward the door, feeling my heartbeat speed up in my chest. Why was I so scared? I was wearing glasses that could see in the dark. But then again, maybe I didn't want to see everything that lurked in the dark. Maybe dark was the way some things were supposed to be. Maybe some things were better left unseen. Having thoroughly spooked myself, I grabbed onto the knob with my sweaty palm. 
Whatever was back there was still scritch, scritch, scritching on the wood. I swallowed, summoning all the courage I could muster. Ever since my parents moved away last spring, leaving me their two-story Victorian home, I'd practically been leaping at my own reflection. It was like all my childhood fears came rushing back the moment I'd been left alone. I tugged open the closet door, the way you might rip off a band-aid, quick and painless. My glasses illuminated the whole interior of the closet, but there was nothing there besides clothes and coats. I felt something nudge my ankle and I looked down to see Whiskers, my aptly named white rag doll, come strolling into the hallway. Bad kitty, I scolded as I scooped Whiskers from the floor, rubbing my nose in his fluff. You almost gave Mama a heart attack. I set him down in the kitchen where he trudged to his food bowl and nibbled daintily at his supper. For such a picky eater, he was getting pretty fat. Is this what the world looks like to you? I asked, staring around at the golden-tinted kitchen. Do you see this well in the dark? Can you spot bugs from across the room? But Whiskers didn't answer me. He was, after all, just a cat. That evening, after I'd had dinner and played with my glasses just a little more, I was exhausted from a very long day. It felt like days had passed since I'd bought the glasses, even though it had only been a few hours. Even in that small period of time, storm clouds had settled over my house and rain fell in icy torrents. I was curled up on the high back living room armchair, reading a book while a fire crackled in the fireplace. It washed the room in a warm, flickering orange glow which contrasted nicely with the blue rain hailing down the window. The muffled sound of droplets pelting the roof made me want to fall asleep. It was quiet and cozy. Whiskers was sleeping on the leather footrest just ahead. He was curled into a white ball. I might have mistaken him for a snowball if he wasn't breathing. Then his head jerked around unexpectedly, ears perked, eyes wide. He was staring at the corner of the room. I followed his eye line, but there was nothing over there but a bookshelf and a few pictures on the wall. Nothing that hadn't been there for at least ten years by now. Whatever, cats were weird. I tried to go back to reading my novel, but I couldn't concentrate. Instead, I glared at him over the top of the book. Whiskers continued to stare at the corner. This wasn't uncommon. He did this all the time, probably several times a week. What is it, boy? I asked. What's over there? Whiskers' head lurched forward in trees. He meowed. In the corner, the bookshelf continued to stand upright. The photographs were still as trees. I read another page or two and then slammed the book down because I could still see whiskers out of the corner of my eye, his body tense, little ears standing tall. I hated when he did this. It was like he could see something that I couldn't. The thought was unsettling. What is it? I said irritably. My raised voice must have frightened him because he flopped off the footrest and scampered out of sight. I sighed. Dumb cat. My new sunglasses were setting just a few feet away. If Whiskers had seen a bug or a mouse, the glasses would probably highlight it for me. Maybe it would solve the mystery once and for all, and I wouldn't have to wear them every time my cat meowed at nothing. Curious, I slipped them on. At first, everything appeared in its normal golden hue. Lightning and thunder exploded on something before making me jump. It was ridiculous how aloof I was becoming. I laughed at my own nervousness. Then I turned my head to the side. Standing in the corner was a goal. His eyes rolled back into his head, broken jaw dangling open on one hinge. His hair hung above his head as if it was floating in water. His clothes were torn. His skin wrinkled and diseased and gray. The nose had decayed so terribly that it was nothing more than two holes in his face. Worms teemed in his many open wounds, and I realized with great horror that he was not standing at all, but floating entirely in the air. The head turned slowly toward me, and he pointed the finger at me, directly at me, and suddenly the thing was drifting towards me, his broken jaw clacking up and down, worms dropping out of his skin and squirming across the floor, hair trailing lightly behind him. Around his neck was the rope noose that floated delicately around him, completely weightless. 
I toppled out of the armchair and scrambled backward on my elbows, shrieking incoherent sentences and crying. I wanted to run, but I had no strength to get off of the ground. I was in utter shock and helpless as this thing drifted toward me, his dead finger aiming at me. I felt myself hit the far wall and suddenly I could scoot back no further. I shrieked and shrieked as I looked up into his face, watched him drift nearer and nearer, then screwed my eyes shut and looked away, because I couldn't watch it touch me. I just couldn't watch it. The glasses must have fallen off my face, because the next thing I knew they were lying on the floor next to me. One of the lenses was cracked. Through tearful eyes I saw that the thing in front of me was gone. The world had lost its golden hue and ahead was my cozy living room. The fireplace crackling while rain poured outside. Everything was as it had been. Finding the strength to stand, I snatched the glasses and ran from the house. It was raining hard outside, but I didn't care. I might have been screaming, but if I was, I couldn't hear myself over the sound of thunder and lightning flashing through the sky. I ran for a long time, my arms directly out in front of me until my feet slipped across wet pavement and I went tumbling into the water. Looking back toward my house, I slipped the glasses on to make sure the creature hadn't followed me. What I saw instead were hundreds of them, thousands floating in the night air. Lightning struck nearby and for a brief moment they were perfectly illuminated. Their dead eyes rolled into their heads, mouths gaping and hungry. I whisked the glasses off and they disappeared. That was nice. I fell backward against the hard concrete ground and stared up at the black sky. Watched the way the rain fell past me in every direction. That was nice too. Before I knew it, I was waking up in a hospital bed with my soaked clothing on the chair beside me. One week later, and I haven't worn the glasses once since that night. I'm afraid of what I might see. I'm living with my parents now. I brought whiskers with me. But whenever he acts strange, whenever he sees something that I cannot, I don't question it. I just leave the room and close the door behind me. Okay, this story was from Reddit, from the subreddit No Sleep. It was written by the Paranormologist, and it is called I Know What Your Cat Sees When It Stares at Nothing. I'll supply a link in the description below to take you to the original post by The Paranormologist. Alright guys, I'm curious to hear what you guys think of my first try ever at doing a creepypasta or Reddit post of any kind. Let me know in the comments section, good or bad, I can take the bad criticism. Uh, please don't worry, this channel is still going to be 99% Jason, Freddy, Michael, Chucky, Leatherface, any type of slasher audiobooks. That's what this channel is and always will be. I just thought it would be fun to throw out a random creepypasta or true Reddit story, you know, once a month or something, or just every now and then. So let me know what you guys thought, and I'll be back very soon with some more of Jason X to the Third Power. We're getting pretty far into that book, and it's getting pretty good. All right, guys, this has been the 80s Slasher Librarian saying thanks for listening, and if I got you with the jump scare at the end, I do not apologize. Have a good night. Try to sleep. And if your cat starts staring at something, just tell your mind, it's nothing. It's just staring at a bug or something like that. Maybe we really don't really want to know what it is seeing. And it's better if we just pretend that it's a bug. Good night.